The Security Council will now begin its consideration of item two of the agenda. I now give the floor to Mr. Jean-Pierre Lacroix. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I welcome this opportunity to brief the Security Council in the context of uh, Resolution 2378 on the progress made and challenges encountered in the implementation of Action for Peacekeeping and its implementation strategy, Action for Peacekeeping Plus. We are five years into uh, A4P. The uh, Declaration of Shared Commitment stands as a testimony to a global consensus and ambition to strengthen missions and make our peacekeepers safer and more effective. A4P Plus, launched in 2021, focuses our energy on critical and catalytic issues that are critical for achieving A4P Plus, A4P's aims. Today, I will briefly speak to results thus far. For more details, I refer you to our latest A4P Plus progress report circulated to the C34, to the brief summary in front of you, and to the Secretary General's report on peacekeeping performance recently submitted to the Security Council. I would also like to take this opportunity to underscore the extent to which we need stronger, more consistent, and unified support of member states to fulfill the ultimate goals of UN peacekeeping, helping to establish and provide the space for durable peace. As we have always conveyed, A4P is a collective effort, and peacekeeping is only as strong as the unity and support of our member states. Growing divisions among member states, combined with the increased complexity of today's conflicts, poses a formidable challenge to peacekeeping and the broader task of maintaining peace and security. Peacekeeping is not a magic wand to help a country return to stability, but with the support of a unified international community, political processes and peace agreements have been successfully implemented. It also took the uh, assistance of peacekeeping missions in the various countries that I will mention. As a result, countries such as Sierra Leone, Cambodia, Namibia, Côte d'Ivoire, Timor-Leste, and many more were able to transition from conflict to peace with the support of UN peacekeeping. It took not only peacekeeping missions, of course, but also the strong and united support of member states to these political processes. Even where political solutions and to conflict seem distant, and that is much more often the case nowadays, peacekeepers continue to protect the lives of hundreds of thousands of civilians in the countries and regions in which they are deployed. It is the case, for example, with UNMIS in South Sudan and with MONUSCO, which protects hundreds of thousands of civilians under direct threats of violence, in spite of daunting challenges and limitations. UN peacekeeping is also working to keep civilians out of harm's way by preserving ceasefires and preventing the resumption of hostilities in places such as southern Lebanon and Cyprus. As we are all too aware, incidents in these regions can easily escalate into the resumption of hostilities. I encourage you to consider the alternative and to, Im to imagine how these situations would evolve if peacekeepers were not present to undertake these daily efforts. With that said, I must note that while peacekeeping plays a critical role in reducing violent conflict, as outlined in the new agenda for peace, peace enforcement is a step too far for peacekeeping and needs to be carried out under different modalities. Excellencies, in an era of increasing complexity, the environment in which our peacekeepers are deployed is ever evolving. Last year, the number of conflict-related deaths worldwide reached a 20-year high. A convergence of global phenomena, global geopolitical tension, climate change, and transnational organized crime point to a future of overlapping crisis. But we must continue to strengthen the effectiveness of peacekeeping, which is one of the most powerful multilateral tools at our disposal to manage, to manage and help resolve conflict. And as the reports I mentioned earlier attest to, we are doing our utmost. Political strategies that have coherent and collective support for key, from key actors are a cornerstone of A4P and A4P+. Political solutions must be, at, must be at the heart of all efforts. This approach is evident in the engagements undertaken by our missions, often in conjunction with regional organizations and other partners leading on political processes. In the Central African Republic, MINUSCA is advancing the peace process through the implementation of a multi-year political strategy coupled with a robust and proactive security approach to deter armed groups. In Mali, 
MINUSMA was instrumental in its assistance to the international med mediation team supporting the peace and reconciliation agreement, particularly in negotiations among the parties. And here, I wish to affirm that even as the mission pursues its withdrawal in line with Security Council Resolution 2690, the United Nations has expressed its readiness to continue its support to the implementation of the peace agreement, which remains critical for peace and stability in Mali. Even where peacekeeping mandates do not explicitly confer the task of supporting political processes, missions often have a pivotal role in enabling conditions conducive to the pursuit of or resumption of negotiations. This is a case in Cyprus, for example, where UNFISIP works closely with the Secretary General's Good Offices mission to foster intercommunal cooperation and facilitate trust and confidence building measures. Effective peacekeeping also requires the right capabilities and mindset. We continue to utilize the Peacekeeping Capability Readiness System, PCRS, to accelerate deployment timelines. Since last November, seven units have been deployed from the PCRS, including two to UNISFA as part of the mission's reconfiguration. We also continue to adapt training and deployment to the needs of missions, for instance, through implementing the recommendations of the Independent Strategic Review on the United Nations response to explosive ordnance threats. Among other actions, this has included revising requirements for unit deploying to three missions to ensure that contingents can effectively operate in their threat environments. However, our work is far from complete. Caveats, especially when, uh, when undeclared by troop and police contributing countries, can significantly hamper our mission's effectiveness and lead to operational setbacks. They also create risk for troop and police contributing countries that are willing to do their utmost to implement the mandate. I would like to reiterate our position that undeclared caveats have no place in UN peacekeeping. I also appeal to member states to fill existing capability gaps. The peacekeeping ministerial meeting in Accra on the 5th and 6th of December this year will be a pivotal, pivotal opportunity to reaffirm and make new commitments to peacekeeping. I invite all member states to review the pledging guide and capability requirement paper we have issued to tailor their pledges at the ministerial meeting to the precise needs we have. The ministerial meeting will also be a critical opportunity for member states to express their political support for UN peacekeeping. Accountability to UN peacekeepers remains a core priority in line with Security Council Resolution 2518 and 2589. As documented in the three A4P Plus progress reports published to date, we continue to make notable strides in enhancing the safety and security of UN peacekeepers, despite the increasingly complex security environments in which we operate. Efforts such as the action plan to improve the security of peacekeepers and implementation of the review on explosive ordnance threats have fostered progress in areas such as force protection, integrated base defense, and countering IEDs. Advances in peacekeeping intelligence and situational awareness are helping missions foresee and address threats, whereas enhanced field crisis management capabilities such as regular case of act training and stress testing contribute to improved safety and security of peacekeepers. Further progress hinges on sustained member state support, especially in the form of specialized skills, equipment, and expertise. But the death of one peacekeeper is, is always one too many. We must remember and honor the sacrifices made by our peacekeepers worldwide, including the 18 peacekeepers killed by malicious acts since my briefing last September. In the context of MINUSMA's drawdown, the mission's operating environment remains particularly dangerous. The risk of attacks by non-state armed groups persists. Five out of seven peacekeepers killed by malicious acts so far in 2023 were serving in Mali. I appeal to all of you to help ensure that we can proceed with the drawdown of MINUSMA in a safe and orderly manner. Accountability of peacekeepers aims for the highest level of performance by all personnel, uniform, and civilian. This includes responsible action towards host countries and their populations, not only in conduct and discipline, but in mission, missions environmental footprints. In line with Security Council Resolution 2436, and as documented in the most recent report of the Secretary General on the overall performance of United Nations peacekeeping operations, we continue our efforts to strengthen the performance of UN peacekeeping at all levels, including at headquarters, within missions, and within uniformed and civilian components. Performance assessment tools have been improved, as well as the way in which we actively follow up on underperformance reports and take remedial actions. 
We also continue to take all necessary measures to address allegations of all forms of misconduct, both past and present. Ending impunity for all forms of misconduct remain a central goal, and we have taken drastic measures in the case of serious allegations, including through repatriation of units where needed. Consistent numbers of allegations of sexual exploitation and abuse continue to, re to be reported annually, although many of these have related to events from past years. Together with Member States, we must work to ensure preventive measures and force zero tolerance of all misconduct and, more, most importantly, uphold the right and dignity of victims. As we mark the 75th anniversary of UN peacekeeping, we are reflecting not only on milestones achieved, but also on how we communicate and engage with the public and communities, explain our mandates, and dispel falsehoods. The recent review of strategic communications across United Nations peacekeeping operations highlighted that effective and proactive strategic communication helps to manage expectations amongst host government and populations. Several missions are now implementing regular perception surveys to better understand the attitudes and expectations of local populations, and we are working to further build capacity and expertise in this area. Communicating peacekeeping's aims and achievements also supports collaboration with national actors, which can, which can enhance our effectiveness. As a, as a proactive measure, our global communication campaign, Peace Begins With Me, demonstrates our tangible impact on those we serve and our collective commitment to peace. We're also working to further step up such proactive media engagement at headquarters and within our missions. We are also taking robust action against all forms and of mis- and disinformation that interfere with the work of our missions. For example, Within hours of it coming out, MINUSCA recently identified and debunked a false online story claiming that a peacekeeper had been arrested for, uh, for arms trafficking. More needs to be done, including by making sure that we will have the right skill sets both at HQ and in our missions to adequately address mis- and disinformation. Excellency, the final A4P plus priority, cooperation with host states, in, uh, is undergirded by transparency, mutual respect, and open dialogue. Through proactive discussions with national authorities, we have often been able to address critical challenges, such as restrictions on freedom of movement and the detention of UN personnel, but it is not always enough. As reaffirmed by Security Council Resolution 2518, working to reduce violations of status of forces agreements across missions is critical. To strengthen our cooperation with host states, we are working to better document and communicate with you on violations of SOFA, SOFA violations. To achieve this, the political engagement of Member States and the Security Council in particular is indispensable. I call on you to engage with host countries where needed to help us proceed with the effective and unimpeded implementation of Security Council mandates. Advancing the Women, Peace and Security Agenda, a core priority in peacekeeping, increases peacekeeping effectiveness. Women's participation in political processes is critical for efforts to achieve sustainable political solutions, and we continue our efforts to support such engagement. In the DR Congo, for example, MONUSCO actively supported the participation of women in the Nairobi process, leading to 40% representation in its third round of consultations between the government and representatives of armed groups and communities. We also continue to make great strides in the uniform gender parity strategy. As of May, women constituted 25, a bit more than 25.6% of individual uniform personnel. As of today, 38% of heads and 33% of deputy heads of civilian-led peacekeeping operations are women. We have also worked to foster gender responsive working and living conditions. I call again on member states to intensify efforts to remove barriers at the national level and increase the participation of women in peacekeeping, including at the senior level. Technology and data are also critical to the future of peacekeeping. Central to this is, on, is the ongoing implementation of the strategy for the digital transformation of UN peacekeeping. While we have made progress towards tech-savvy, data-informed peacekeeping forces, further investments in data capabilities among personnel is required to ensure that data can be effectively leveraged for effective decision-making. We continue to proactively advance A4P and A4P+, but also remain seized of the need to continuously review and expand our efforts to ensure peacekeeping remains fit for purpose. 
Over the past several years, the Security Council has mandated us to do so, notably through Security Council Resolution 2518 on safety and security of peacekeepers, 2589 on accountability for crimes against peacekeepers, 2436 on peacekeeping performance, and 2594 on peacekeeping transitions. So all, most if not all of the work stand that I mentioned to you are indeed mandated by member states. As the drawdown from Mali creates greater pressure for scalability, I would like to take this opportunity to emphasize that upholding and fulfilling our responsibilities stipulated in these resolutions requires both resources and political will. At its core, peacekeeping is a political instrument. Its efficacy is linked to robust political support from the Council. While clear mandates with adequate resources are the foundation for success, the cooperation of host nations and genuine intent of parties to seek peace are also crucial. Reflecting upon the last 75 years, there are many examples of successful political processes supported by EU and peacekeeping. Presently, as the international community grows increasingly divided, peacekeeping efforts in support of political processes face a mitigated track record. Nonetheless, the intermediate goals of our mission, including in protecting the lives of countless civilians or preserving ceasefire from escalation and resumption of, resumption of hostilities, remain extremely meaningful. For many populations at the front lines of conflict, the presence of peacekeeping missions stands as an important deterrent to an even grimmer reality. As we continue to work towards improving and updating peacekeeping to meet the evolving nature of threat to peace, we must be diligent in assessing, in assessing our added value, ensuring our capabilities and resources are aligned to our objectives. The dedication of all stakeholders during five years of A4P has borne results, but we cannot be complacent. Let us recommit to peacekeeping reform and build further on our shared successes. In closing, I offer gratitude to Member States for championing A4P and the priority areas of A4P+. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank Mr. Lacroix for his 